Hello and welcome once again to our daily Africa Cup of Nations show on France 24. It's nearly that time. In just under 24 hours, we will know who is crowned the next kings of the continent as Egypt face Senegal in Yaoundé. But first, there's the match of the third and fourth place match between Cameroon and Burkina Faso. Here to look over this evening's game and preview the final, once again, I'm joined by the illustrious Eurosport journalist Ruben Slachter. Thanks again, Ruben, for joining us. Good evening, Jean, and uh, thanks for having me again. Well, what an enthralling match and a dramatic end to that for the third place as Cameroon came back from three goals down to beat Burkina Faso on penalties at the Stade Amadou Ahijo in Yaoundé. The Stallions were 3-0 up after goals from Siv Ayago and Andre Onana Haula, uh, own goal, and Jibril Ouattara's strike. But the indomitable Lions came roaring back thanks to Stefan Bauken and two goals from captain Vincent Abubakar, only to win 5-3 from the subsequent penalties. Cameroon started with a severely weakened team, Ruben, but what a game it was. And uh, we can say that actually this raises the profile of that third uh, place encounter, don't you think? Well, it was a fantastic game. That's uh, to begin. That's that's for sure. It was also because of yeah, Burkina Faso for 60 minutes. They were just by far the better team also because of Cameroon were yeah weakened they were also tired after playing uh, that that long match on on first day so yeah that was a real advantage the the stallions had for this for this game um is this really uh, why we should have a, a third match uh, place for the third pl uh, a match i'm sorry for the third place i don't know uh, there's always the it's a little bit the eternal discussion because at the world cup it's still there the euros it's not organized anymore because there's no uh, no nothing to win in this game. Uh, at the same time, we also have to say I think that uh, on the mental part for the uh, for the for the Cameroon team, this could be something in, important because we saw them. They were a wounded lion on the ground, and then they are the most dangerous. So maybe they've learned their lesson and also to play a little bit more with more opportunism and well with the uh, really important matches ahead against Algeria. It's maybe something they will keep in mind for later. Well, we kind of wish we would have seen a game like this earlier on in the tournament. I want to touch on that point that you made and I want to go live to Yaoundé with uh, France 24 sports editor Simon Harding now. Simon, uh, you're in and amongst the people in Cameroon. How important for the tournament was it for the hosts to finish on a high such as tonight? Massively important. Uh, the disappointment uh, in the streets of Yaoundé when uh, the uh, kept when Cameroon lost uh, to Egypt in that penalty shootout on Thursday night it was uh, simply it was so tangible you know you had the impression really that the Africa Cup of Nations had already come to an end uh, so the reality was that Cameroon had to bounce uh, back had to finish on a high and uh, the Concesao was able to rely on the players that have uh, made this tournament a successful one for Cameroon in particular Vincent Tabubaka who finishes uh, the competition with eight goals which is uh, simply a fantastic achievement. Asmo Gian of Ghana, who was uh, one of the top scorers in the latest editions, uh, had eight goals across three different Africa Cup of Nations, just to put uh, Abu Bakr's uh, achievements into perspective. And as Ruben mentioned, and it's very important, in just a few weeks' time, Cameroon will have a massive match, a uh, double confrontation uh, with Algeria to, in the World Cup qualifiers for a place in Qatar. It is uh, a match that's going to confirm uh, Samuel Eto's new reign as FECA Foot uh, president. It's going to confirm uh, Cameroon's status as uh, returning as one of the top nations on the African continent. So there is a lot of stake. And after the comments made by Abu Bakr and others after the semi-final defeat that the team didn't play together, there wasn't unity. Well, to come back from three goals down, to show that unity uh, and to persevere and to win a penalty shootout after failing so dismally against the Pharaohs was very important and will be a massive moral victory uh, for the Indomitable Lions. Thanks, Simon. Of course, we have to wonder where was this Cameroon team uh, previously? Well, if we needed any reminder, 
Sunday evening now is the match that fans across Africa have been waiting for. The Panakia, the pinnacle, the most prestigious trophy on offer throughout the land. It's the final. It's Senegal versus Egypt, kicking off at 8 p.m. local time from Olympus Paul Bia Stadium. Now, looking back, Senegal came into the tournament as one of the most fancy teams, but it wasn't a smooth start for the Lions of Teranga, beating Zimbabwe in their opener 1-0 thanks to a 97th minute Sadio Mane penalty. Two consecutive goals draws followed against Guinea and Malawi, but that was enough for the next round qualification. In the last 16, though, Senegal found their magic touch, beating Cape Verde 2-0. Then a mightily impressive 3-1 victory over Equatorial Guinea followed in the quarters before a stern semi-final test against Burkina Faso. But once again, the Stallions, the stubborn Stallions, were no match for the Lions. The number one ranked team in Africa turned on the style, winning 3-1 yet again. Abdou Diallo, Dieng and Mane again are steering their team to the final. A chance for glory and history now awaits Aliou Cisse and his team. Let's hear from him. This match is another final against a great nation, Egypt, which has seven trophies, seven stars. We are preparing this match in the best way and we want to win it. The past remains in the past. What's important is what will happen in 24 hours on the field and we are optimistic and determined to win. Well, to preview Senegal's chances, Simon, let's go back to you. It's, it's only three years after Senegal were in the final against a similar team to Egypt in Algeria. Uh, but now we've got a golden generation, the likes of Mane, Koulibaly, Edouard Mendy in goals. What is different? What is going to make them get that trophy finally? It's hard to say what's going to get them the trophy. They still haven't got the trophy. A lot of people are going on with the presumption that Senegal are going to win this game hands down against Egypt. I don't think it's as simple as that, but certainly what an opportunity for Senegal to uh, join the Hall of Greats of Africa, to be considered simply as one of the greatest African footballing nations on the continent. Because it is true that for now, you can't really say that Senegal is one of the biggest and best African nations when it comes to football, because they've never won anything. And that's important important and Aliou Cisse was uh, very keen to stress that point. He was keen uh, to stress that he learned lessons from uh, the 2019 defeat uh, to Algeria where his team struggled uh, to respond to a Baghdad uh, Buneja early goal in that match and he was keen to stress that uh, his players are more prepared this time around. For example, the likes of captain Khalidou Koulibaly joining uh, the ranks in defence has been simply huge uh, for Senegal who've only conceded uh, three goals uh, in the entire tournament. So it is a massive opportunity uh, for the Senegalese uh, to win against the most decorated team on the African continent, which is Egypt. Uh, the question, we put the question to Alou Cisse in the press conference today, uh, whether he thought that Egypt with injury suspensions, Carlos Queiroz missing, of course, uh, would be, you know, a little bit diminished. And he said, not at all. This is going to be a very hard team to beat. It's not a surprise that Egypt are there. No one expected the fair to make it this far and it is going to be an absolutely cracking game of football on the one hand on the one hand we might see a very cagey affair but certainly you do get the feeling that the cards are in Senegal's hands if Senegal put the ingredients if they inject pace if they stretch the game if they boss midfield if they play attacking football and don't fall into the trap of uh, catering to Egypt's style of sitting back and letting the game drag on then Senegal should and probably will win this game. If not, it's going to be a much more open match and beware the Pharaohs. Thanks, Simon. A very tight encounter we can expect. Well, enjoy the game when you go tomorrow. A day before the match, Dhaka in Senegal has got football fever. The Senegalese are ready to see the cup brought home at last with preparations for the big game well underway. Sarah Sako and Eliman Ndao bring us the excitement from the capital of Senegal. At Dakar's biggest market, Gilles is one of the main attractions. He's also one of the Lions' most ardent fans. A victory would be a dream come true. Gilles spent a month's salary on accessories. We are already getting ready to celebrate. It's going to be great. Joy for all. We really waiting for this cup. In Medina neighborhood, excitement is almost at fever pitch. 
Senegal has never before won the African crown, and despite losing in two previous finals, these fans are optimistic. Everyone has become proud to be Senegalese. We are also proud to be Senegalese and African at the same time. It is exceptional. A final is never forgotten. In the Saar family, all anyone can talk about is the upcoming match. Football fever across the country, in which many households will be watching the final together as a family. We pray for the Lions. We hope for a clear victory of two goals to nil. It will be huge. The hope and dreams of a nation rest on the team's shoulders. It remains to be seen if the third time be the charm for the Lions, but rest assured they will not go down without a fight. Well, Ruben, uh, Senegal will be playing against Egypt. Now, they started the tournament badly with a 1-0 loss to Nigeria. From then on, they gradually progressed, uh, beating the likes of Ivory Coast, Morocco 2-1, and then Cameroon, the hosts, in the knockout stages to reach the final. Now, that's exhausting. They've now done three games into extra time. How are the Pharaohs going to manage some, something like this in the final? Oh, they're going to manage it like they did all the games before. They're just going to, like like Simon said, they want to keep the pace low to suck the energy out of the, the Senegalese team and just, yeah, let them uh, get them as frustrated as possible in the good sense of uh, of the word, of course. So that's that's what, they go, what they're trying to do. Carlos Cruyas knows exactly how to prepare them. Uh, I think he will also probably watch a little bit how Algeria did it in 2019. I know that Aliou Cissé doesn't want to make the same mistake, but it's that way that they that they can win and that they, if they want to win, they they have to do it like this. I don't know. I don't think that they will be so afraid to go into extra time again because they, yeah, the way they play, it's not that exhausting at the end. It will have an influence, of course, that they've played a lot more minutes than Senegal, but. I don't know if that will make the difference. I think that if Senegal won't make it after, won't manage to win it after 90 minutes, I see that like like against Cameroon, the longer it will remain uh, on an even score, the better the chances will be for Egypt. And uh, one man in particular, I guess all the talk before the match has been about two players. Mohamed Salah for Egypt and Sadio Mane for Senegal. Uh, both have been hailed as the best players in Africa at some point. Salah in 2017 and 18 and Mane in 2019. And should Salah win the AFCON trophy, he could have a serious claim to winning the next Ballon d'Or. Together, the two players have formed the fulcrum of one of the most lethal striking attacks in Europe over the past four seasons for Liverpool. But tomorrow, the Reds' star-wide men now find themselves on opposite sides of the pitch with a chance to lead their nations to glory. Mo Salah, though, says it's just rivals for one game, then friends again straight after. To play against uh, Senegal as a team, also against Sadio, but tomorrow we're going to be a rival. After tomorrow we're going to be a teammates again. Uh, we had a small chat after the uh, Moroccan game when we see each other. I was checking how is his head and yeah, I say well, let's, uh, hopefully we'll meet in the final and we'll play a good game, so that's, that's all. Ruben, Mo Salah, they're playing it down, but really these two have lived up to the billing as those African greats. However, is it a disservice to focus purely on them ahead of the final and not on the teams which have bought, uh, have done the, the, the job up until this point? Yeah, well, those teams have been really impressive. I mean, especially in Senegal, Mane is really has, is one of the, of, of the 11 in that team. I think that Senegal, we can talk about a lot of their stars. We can talk about Koulibaly, we can talk about Mendy and Goal, uh, Idrissa Gangue in, in midfield, and also Ismail Assar in attack. So there's a lot of stories over there. With Egypt, it's a little bit different, but we said it already before. Their st really strong point is just their stubbornness. They can defend for such a long time and just wait for that single moment. And then Mo Salah is there to... Uh, to find that solution and to and to get them uh, the, the the victory like he did against Morocco for example so of course these are that those players you want you're watching a game for but like you say we also have to give a lot of credit to their teammates because it's because of them that they can excel during the matches 
Well, we can't wait to see what they bring to the pitch tomorrow. And that, in turn, brings us to the end of the show for this evening. Thanks to Simon Harding in Yawunde and to Ruben in the studio. Thanks once again. And thank you for watching. We'll be back for the big one tomorrow, a special edition covering the African Cup of Nations final. Until then, stay tuned for more news on France 24.